back to the shop. I hope everybody had a good Christmas and uh, New Year. I know I did. Um, probably all of us have eaten too much and I've probably gained like 10 pounds of eating just stuff in my face for four days straight. Um, so it's been down in the shop for the past couple weeks here, cleaning up a little bit. As you can see, I have kind of a semi-clean workbench now. And just don't bother look behind me. Um, that's one of the bad things about having flat surfaces in the shop is that they collect everything. And one of the most notorious things for collecting everything is a table saw. Which mine actually isn't that bad, I'm surprised. I'm only at, I've actually got wood on top of the table saw. And uh, that's about it. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, we've just been kind of cleaning up and organizing a little bit here. Uh, I did play around on the lathe a little bit, nothing to write home about, nothing to really record. Um, I was playing with that little opera press that I bought from Harbor Freight and uh, I reworked the table a little bit. I actually chucked it up in the lathe and I faced both sides of it and I actually uh, recentered the hole that they had in it. Um, to do that, I actually had to use a boring bar because it ended up, it was off, but um, if I were to try to drill it, the drill would want would want to wander back into a, the same hole. So I just uh, got a tiny boring bar and kept enlarging it until I got to a 3 8 diameter and actually just put a uh, Loctite at a um, 3 8 uh, roll pin in there and re-drilled the hole in the uh, press of 3 8 And I also went around all these little cutouts here with a um, with a little grinding wheel in my Dremel and smoothed them all out because they were just shocked to the touch. Um, so now it's nice and smooth and uh, you know we're kind of parallel faces on it as best we can get and um, that's about it. If I ever decide to line bore that thing and can actually figure out a way to get it on that lathe and bolt it to the compound um, we'll definitely do a video over right now. I'm just going to leave it be because I have no plans to use it on it on anything um, in the next few videos so we'll see. It may become a project down the road or not. Um, today, what I wanted to do is just, um, I wanted to make a new camera mount for over on the lathe. Um, the swing arm that I have on there is just a, an old desk lamp that I had mounted the camera to, which, which actually works. The only thing is, is there's nothing to lock it from swinging, so if you just tap it, it kind of bounces. And also, because of the swing arc, and the way it is, the way it's articulated, it's articulated up and down, especially when you're at uh, the length of its travel up and you're looking straight down, the actual ways of the lathe are kind of cockeyed and there's no way to straighten the camera to get it parallel with the bed of the lathe. Um, so that's why in some of the videos that you look, if you're at, at, you know, looking straight down, the bed's kind of cockeyed, especially to, if I'm filming up towards the headstock. So I never really liked that. So uh, I went back and watched a couple of Double Boost videos um, where he first showed off his what he called his skyhook, which is uh, a bar mounted with a nice little carriage that he mounted a telescoping uh, camera mount on. And his his pictures and his you know uh, angles are, are, are really nice, and it, it's good in the fact that he can get the camera out of the way when he needs to. So I kind of wanted to make something like that, and the only problem is, is I didn't want to have to go out and buy a ton of stock to do it because I don't have that much laying around the, in the in the shop, and I didn't want to have to go out and buy it and order it and the whole thing. So I started trying to think of commonly available items that I can make this out of, and the first thing that popped into mind was plastic, like something like PVC, but it's just too it's too um, brittle. Well, it's not too brittle, but it doesn't have enough stiffness to it. It would bend and sag. So then I actually was in uh, Lowe's the other day and I f saw the regular cast iron pipe, regular black iron. Now, in my experience, black iron is the roughest thing known to man. and uh, It will have the casting seams and everything else in the middle of it, but for whatever reason, this one particular piece that they had in the rack was super smooth. And this is a six foot piece of half inch black iron and it's really smooth. It's not necessarily completely round because of that that little seam, but I'll be damned if this isn't the smoothest piece of black iron that I, I've seen. So I came up with an idea it, to use this as the pole and make a carriage that mounts on it. Now again, 
I kind of didn't, I could easy, easily enough kind of make something maybe out of aluminum or, or, or whatnot and drill it and bore it to fit this and slide it on there. But then I kind of thought too, um, what if somebody wanted to make these on the cheap, which I did because I'm a cheap bastard. So this is basically the cheap bastard's version of the Skyhook made with commonly available parts. Um, and I didn't want to cut up all my nice aluminum. So uh, what, what we have here is that bar that we're going to make the carriage on. And I'll show you what the carriage is going to be made out of when we come up um, onto the desk here. And our actual camera mount, um, Double Boost had, hit, had bought one at a, a yacht sale um, or a swap meet. And it was just a telescoping, kind of one of those little spikes, a little, little one stand, and he can loosen it and, and, and uh, extend it. And that's what he made it out of. At the end, it has kind of like that ball swivel mount. Well, I looked around at those, and, um, you know, all of my, you know, uh, all, all my thrift stores and stuff didn't have any of those, and they had just the tripods and everything else. And if I wanted to go ahead and buy one, looking at anywhere, the ones that actually, you know, unscrew in extend, not the ones that have the little clips, um, will run you up anywhere between 30 and 50 bucks. So I didn't want to spend that. So I started thinking about it and searching around the stop, and then I remembered this. And this here is uh, Mr. Longarm. And all this is, is an extendable roller handle for uh, paint rollers. Same thing, twist it, extend it, and lock it. Now, as you can see, it's long as hell, and I don't need this length. But what we can do is figure out what we need and just cut it. And it has a, a stopper in the back that I can move down to, um, the inside point here and then that will serve as our stopper. And the tip here is that Acme um, thread for a, uh, the end of a handle. But this whole piece is almost solid. In other words, I have a, I drilled an eighth inch drill bit through the very tip of it and um, just slightly larger than that eighth inch drill bit I can see is where the plastic for this actually begins. So what we can do is uh, drill and thread this for just a little adapter to be able to screw into this and then be able to mount a, a head and this is from a cheap Targus, um, $15 Targus uh, tripod that I bought at um, Target I believe it was and this is the same thing I've been using on that swing arm that I have mounted to the wall. Now this already has an adapter stud to adapt from the end of this to the um, hole in that little swing arm and is just shy of 5 16 so what I can do is turn this down to 5 16 drill a 5 16 thread in there and screw this sucker right in there now obviously it's going to be hanging upside down like this so we need another bracket to write to make our camera upright and I just have two angle lines here two pieces of angle bracket actually bolted together and what we can do is just hold that like so and to make this extra stiff, um, and also because the little screw on these adapters don't go all the way through, I'll probably pull this one out and just drill a hole and sandwich the whole mess together with the, with the bolt straight through. And then I could take that quarter 20 screw and put it right in the bottom here and into my camera. And uh, that's our bracket. Our camera will sit up here. So um, let me get over here on the bench and uh, let me show you some of the components of how we're actually going to make the carriage that's going to slide along that half inch gas pipe. Okay, so on each end of that, that half inch uh, <laughs> line there, I'm going to have a Street 90 screwed into uh, a mounting plate, and that's what's going to mount up on the ceiling, and that's going to give us, obviously, um, that much off of the ceiling, which is more than enough. Now, the carriage itself is going to be made from black iron tees and what this is is uh, three quarter inch by three quarter inch by half inch so the three quarter inch here fits over now you can see the play in it and how we're going to take care of that is we're going to use these brass 
nipples here as guides. Now, I'd already, I'd already done one, which I, is that one. Uh, that one hasn't been machined yet. And what it is, is just a regular three quarter inch brass nipple. Um, this is two inches long. And you can see here that it doesn't fit over the half inch line. I already did one just to see if there's enough meat on these, but you can bore them out for a nice fit on that half inch line. So we have the brass against the cast, and it's gonna act kinda like a bearing and be able to move nice. So my plan here is to take two of these, screw them together like so. Now this one's already bored. I have no idea what this little line here is um, in them. That was there when I bought it. All of them had that, and that groove is just as deep as the thread here. I don't know if it's just a test or what, but they're all like that. You can see this one's like that too. But uh, what I'll do is I'll screw this in, and I'll actually probably take the hacksaw and cut it here so we can use this other half on the other side so we only have to do one of them. But just so you get the idea of where we're going here, that will be a carriage that's going to slide along our pipe. Now, this is half inch, and I have some half inch adapters from half inch pipe threading to the to eighth inch um, fine thread, which is like for compression fittings. And we're going to put those in here. Now these holes here, um, if I take an 11 30 seconds drill, I can pretty much get all of the thread out of there, or more or less get all the thread out of there. So I can probably tap these for a 3 8 thread. It's not going to be as, uh, as um, much of a thread engagement. I mean, it's not going to be like 75%, probably maybe around 50%. Um, but it doesn't really make a difference. We're not really holding any weight. So instead of having to go up to half inch, I can just do that with three eighths and that should, that should uh, hold me perfectly well. And what we'll do is we'll take this one, or one of them, we'll make a threaded uh, piece that'll thread in and then we want to adapt to, there's that pole. To the inside here of that extendable pole. So we'll get a piece that's a nice snug fit inside here, maybe Loctite it in, either that or, or, or as you can see they did here, maybe peen the end or something like that or crimp it onto there, some way to attach just an aluminum slug in here um, by 3 8 thread so we can screw it right into one of these holes. This other hole, all that's going to hold is a, um, a metal rod, probably just a regular steel rod because i got a bunch of 3 8 steel here. Uh, a long 3 8 steel rod and at the end of that rod will just be a brass tip and um, that'll be threaded probably just at the end, maybe about a quarter to a half inch of thread at the end, but that is going to reach all the way down into that half inch pipe. So that's going to be our locking mechanism because this is never going to sit perfectly vertical. Um, I'm going to want to swing it to the side or to this side. So we need some way to be able to lock this at whatever angle we need. And, um, um, and I did notice that every single piece uh, every single fitting that I could find in any of the stores are all made in China. Everything's made in China now. I can't even get a fitting that's made in the United States. It's pretty much amazing. Plus the, I mean, the quality on these on these adapters. Uh, I don't know if you can you can see that there. You like that? That, that that's pretty cute, isn't it? You know, wonderful threading there. Um, anyway, not to go too far into that. Or the fact that every single copper fitting that you get now is so friggin' loose, it's ridiculous. But that's uh, another subject altogether. 
So um, that's pretty much going to be our uh, cheap man's version of a skyhook with the carriage and the extendable camera mount. So what I need to do is set up on the lathe and we need to bore this one out. This one's already done, so we need to bore this one out. Okay, so we're set up in the lathe. Now I have my jaws reversed. And the reason why is because these outside jaws have those little serrations in it. And this um, pipe thread here is tapered. So what will happen is when I go to clamp it down, I'm going to catch this raised um, small, small, tiny little band in the middle, but then the threads are going to kind of fall into one of those serrations no matter what I do. And when I go to tighten the chuck, it's going to cock it to one side. Um, so these inside jaws here are nice and smooth. And also when I was doing the other uh, nipple, When I was doing this other nipple, you can see I have this small band in the middle where there are no threads, and that was the perfect size to grip on with these uh, these smaller um, inside, uh, well, they're actually outside jaws, but the inside of the outside jaws, if that makes any sense. So um, we got a little bit, little bit of wobble no matter what you do. I mean, this is just a, a, a pipe nipple, so, but it's, it's pretty good, and uh, we should be able to pull that out. I'm just going to go slow because... Um, it worked fine on these. This is a different make of uh, pipe nipple than this, so I'm assuming the outside wall thickness is the same, but we're just going to go slow and we're going to sneak up on it. Probably only go 10,000 at a time, so it's going to take a little bit, but like I said, I'm not a production shop. I have all the time in the world, and I'd rather not screw up. So anyway, let's uh, gonna get going here. Okay, let's check the fit. Okay, so here's my piece of half inch. And we got a little bit of play in case when we tighten this up, um, compared to our other one, we may be a little bit of, uh, out of alignment, so I have a little extra play in there um, to be able to slide that up and down. So, um, when we fit this up uh, to our little 
slide piece and uh, see how everything works together. Okay, so here we go. Um, oh, actually, let me get the carriage out of the way here. I had to engineer a little bit of slop into this. Um, even though they slid freely on the bar, there are, there are very variances um, in diameter along this length. And even though that two inch piece slid down nice, once I made it into an eight, on, eight inch piece, it bound in a few places. So I just had to open these up a little bit more. Um, I had 860 thousandths on them. I uh, ended up opening up to 885 thousandths. And um, that worked pretty good. There were just a couple of sticky spots, so I ran it up and down a few times. That made some, uh, some marks on the inside of these little brass fittings. And I just polished those, uh, those marks with some sandpaper and like a little flap disc. And uh, we got it to slide nice. There's one little sticky spot uh, right, about, right about there, but it's not like I can't get past it. So, I mean, we're able to, there's the sticky spot right there, but it just slows the, the carriage down. It doesn't bind it. So, I mean, you can see I'm able to go into it. So now we need to concentrate on our locking little tab and also our uh, adapter to hold our paint rod slash camera mount. So what we need to do is set up to drill and tap those little adapters from this uh, half inch pipe to the eighth inch there. Um, I'm going to try some 3 8 taps and see if that will give me enough thread if I can drill through it. So. Let's give that a shot. Um, so everything in here is nice and tight, I and mean, I can't undo them by hand. It's just a little counterintuitive and, and just weird for me to put together pipe without any kind of sealer on the threads. Um, more than once I was looking around for my little bottle of a rectus seal, but we're good to go. Okay, we're just going handheld for a second here, and uh, I have the bar mounted to the ceiling above the lathe as far back as I, uh, roughly on center with the lathe. I can't get it directly on center. We're pretty much in line with um, this outside side of the bed. Uh, as you can see, uh, the mad plumber built this house. This whole ceiling is finished. This whole ceiling is uh, hand laid plaster, so it's thick and hard as shit. Um, the next house I buy, there is not gonna be a finished ceiling in the cellar. It's just not happening because I, I don't know what's above here. Anyway, that's another story. So, like I said, we have the mad plumber to contend with over here. This is the actual waste pipe for my kitchen sink, which is on that outside wall. And this actually was bent down like that. I didn't touch it. I clear it. Um, for whatever reason on this house, this is the, the outside silcox. I have a, uh, there's the cold water. And for whatever reason, I have a hot water one out there too which is what this is. Um, I've never used it, it's always been off and it, since day one it's been floating like this and it has actually been bent like that because um, you can see it was an add-on because here's the original one and as you can see everything's nice and heated up and bent over each other and this is kind of just put in there to clear everything so uh, what I'll do is I'll just get I'll get them a, a, uh, a plate with a clamp that takes the threaded rod and I'll just bolt that in place there and uh, like I said we slide over if I need to clear this for any reason I can turn it and go over it once I get that plate on there to clear, to hold that up and clear it nice nicer but I shouldn't actually have to go up that far with this anyway should pretty much just be in this general area if I have to go over this I can turn it and go over but um, I already threaded this for 3 8 I can't seem to find the other one right now. Um, it's got to be around here somewhere. But basically I just had to get this up so I can get my length for that pole so we can cut it. And then I can actually make the adapter to go from this to that pole. So um, basically I'm going to get I'm going to get it which is um, on the floor right there and uh, hold it up and figure out where I want it and we're going to cut it and then we'll come back. 
Okay, this is the uh, that centerpiece the uh, on the end. That's usually where the brush led on. So I already drilled it five sixteenths, and we're just going to tap that for a three eighths um, coarse thread. Grab my tap here, three eighths sixteen, and we're just going to tap it for Too far on that one. I didn't chuck it up that hard because I didn't want to crush the plastic. But a little wobbly on that too, but no big deal. Not a huge thing. Doesn't have to be perfect. And uh, we got a nice deep thread in there. Okay, so we reset that. As you can see, I shortened the length to the length that I want. Uh, and we reset it with the center punch. Uh, basically just four sides, bang the center punch in, let it make a divot, and let it grab. Um, this other end I didn't touch. This is the actual part that holds like a little expandable um, threaded collar on here, which grabs the inside. I didn't want to mess with that because I didn't want to loosen this, so I figured this side would be easy to reset. So that's why I did it that way, because I, I had to take this off anyway, because um, this rod wouldn't fit through my chuck. So what I need to do now is this is the outside piece, and we have to measure this diameter, and I have to make a slug that's a close fit to this. I'll probably just make it out of aluminum. And then we have to um, make a, like a little plug with a stud that will thread into that brass piece on the uh, actual um, little camera slide. So it'll sit some something like like that. All right, so I'm gonna make that out of aluminum. So I'm gonna grab a piece and we'll cut it and uh, we'll start on that. Okay, so I measured the inside of the pipe, and uh, it's 962 thousand. so that's what we want to bring this down. This is just one inch aluminum, and I'm, I'm supporting it with the center for no other reason, just because of the fact that it's kind of a long piece sticking out of there, and I really don't feel like hacking off a piece with the bandsaw. Um, so we're going to turn it down to that diameter for about an inch, inch and a quarter or so, and um, I think I said, I think I said that, uh, that little, this little piece here was three, I uh, put a three eighths thread in there. I didn't, I drilled it for three eighths. It's a seven sixteenths thread in there, so um, sorry about that. But we're just gonna drill, we're gonna turn this down so it's a nice fit on uh, the inside diameter of this, and then we'll turn down a section and thread it for seven sixteenths. Got here. It should be pretty damn close. Oh, that's a nice fit. That's a nice fit. That's perfect right there. Alrighty. So we're gonna leave that alone, and uh, we can either lock tight this or do whatever we want to attach it. Now we got to take down. The outside diameter is set to our 7 16 threading diameter.
Yeah, that is. I'll just file that pip off. All right, so um, I took down my camera setup, so I'm not going to get any video of these last few steps here, but um, basically here's the rod here, and we're all bolted up. We have a 3 8 bolt going through the base here. I just drilled out this little piece right into there, and I mean, we're, we're pretty tight on there, so I can still swivel this. Now, this bracket here, this is going to be bolted like that to the bottom here and uh, what I'll do what I'll do is I will take um, just drill straight through here and basically put a bolt sandwich and everything together and then we gotta work on our stop rod okay so here's pretty much the finished product the camera will sit here and um, I have full movement to turn it, I have full movement to tilt it, and the thing I was more concerned about is I have room to level the camera when it's at an angle. Now that locking screw, I found a, a long 3 8 bolt in my stash and I just put a brass tip on it. And we'll use this for now and maybe eventually I'll, I'll work up some sort of handle for it. Um, probably just turn the outside of this down and or, or even just cut it and thread it and lock tight a knob of some sort on it. But for right now, We'll just test it out with this, so. Okay. And also, obviously, I have my extension. So, just snug this up here with a wrench. So here it's tilted out, we'll just nip that up, and that'll hold nicely. Alright, so uh, why don't we just put the camera on there and see what kind of pictures we can get from this. If I wanted to show anything, any threading stuff or anything, I can actually bring you guys right over my shoulder and you can see me working the controls, reading the threading dial, or I could even... I can get you guys right up on the chuck there. Right on, uh, right on top, and as you can see, the ways are now parallel with the camera, where before they were kind of crooked when I got a shot like this. So I got a lot more kind of options with this, and hopefully I can get some better pictures and improve the videos a little bit, um, just uh, videography-wise. So I uh, hope this works out. Like I said, I'm, I'm, the, the one thing I do have to do is I have to make a handle for that uh, little stop, but um, you know, we can, swing, we can swing you out all over the place with this now. So um, definitely going to get some different shots going and uh, try to see if I can get some interesting things. Maybe, uh, you know, the good, uh, doing boring and being able to see the inside. Um, or looking dead on at the chuck as it's turning, you can actually see the diameters, um, you know, uh, what's being taken off as it goes, um, all, all, all different kinds of things. So definitely looking forward to using this. Um, like I said, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it is functional, it works, and uh, it's cheap. And the only thing that sucks about it is actually mounting the camera. Right now I just have a quarter inch screw in the bottom of the camera. Um, to hold it so it's harder to get on and off. I have to unscrew the screw instead of using the clip me mechanism um, like you would with a, a tripod. Uh, if in my travels I find a really cheap tripod, um, I might get it just for that clipping mechanism. I'd like to keep them all the same. Um, and it was, I, like to get one, I would like to get one that would match the mount that I have over my, uh, my workbench there. So. Um, 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I uh, will see you on the next one. I do have some upcoming projects planned. Uh, I do want to make a set of um, machinist jacks and things like that. Uh, right now we just got to go through and uh, clean the living crap out of this lathe because and down here in general because shit is everywhere and uh, I already got yelled at. So um, let me get to cleaning so I can actually make more videos and you don't find me buried somewhere.